Welcome to the presentation of distributed computer system assignment. The topic that we have chosen for this project is smart convenience store system and the group members are Limbeji, myself, Juvenita, Walusha and Kwaja Hoy. Short description regarding this project. This is the proposed system to monitor stock availability of product items in the shelf. The system will be implemented when the items are not on the shelf, the time the shopper wants to purchase, but the products are available in store inventory. Through the system, the retailers can improve on-shelf product availability, increase sales revenue, and improve shopper satisfaction. For the flow of the diagram, when the user walks into the store, the camera sensor collects the patient data with AWS IoT Core. Then the data will be stored in S3 Bucket. S3 Bucket will send the data to video recognition and trigger AWS Lambda to compare face. The video recognition and Lambda allows to detect and compare the user's face when they enter the store. When the customer's face similarity is high, the facial data then either one of the three lambdas check-in, check-out or add to cart will be triggered. The product data from the shelf are captured through IoT sensors with AWS IoT Core. Identify product AWS Lambda function is used to compare and identify type of products in the shelf. Check-in Lambda tracks the customer in the store with DynamoDB. Checkout Lambda tracks the living customer and generate received and charge them. And lastly, add to cart detects which customer is taking which product from which shelf. After executing the add to cart Lambda function, it updates the user card in tracking DynamoDB. Then the product data in the shelf is updated in the product DynamoDB. Data storing in S3 bucket will be processed again from the data pipeline to Amazon QuickSight and perform data visualization. Data pipeline with data stored in S3 bucket enables to create complex data processing. Product DynamoDB is connected to sh update shelf lambda function to Amazon SNS which generates email or SMS to store manager. This is to alert the store manager to check the shelf monitoring portal if the product is lacking in the shelf. Then lastly, the manager can instruct to refill the shelf. Hello sir, I'm Manavicha Guna Sarkarin and my student ID is 19ACB00277. So today I'm going to present background on Smart Convenience Store System. Smart Convenience Store System refers to the intelligent and automated processing of a part of storage business operation using technical solution to minimize or eliminate interruption. This sector has seen a major transformation fueled by technologies such as Internet of Things, uh, IoT. It has already been applied by more than 50% of major stores worldwide. IoT is a network of interconnected devices loaded with sensors. It enables these devices to communicate, evaluate, and exchange data about their physical surroundings using cloud-based uh, software platform and other networks. Smart convenience store use uh, sensors that is inserted within shelves or underneath them to communicate, evaluate, and exchange data within its network. A lack of accuracy inventory tracking can result in stockout and overstock, which costs merchants worldwide billions of dollars each year. By automatic inventory visibility, IoT device can address this issue. Stores may improve procurement planning by implementing smart inventory system management solution by based on shelf sensors. Furthermore, it can establish automated uh, checkout. Checkout is one of the most labor intensive and frequently disliked process by customers. When checkout lines are too long, many customers leave without purchasing anything results in lost revenue. To prevent customers from departing empty address stores, will employ IoT-based com cloud computing solutions, Lambda services such as check-in, check-out, and add cart add card functions to automate the payment where it will automatically charge customers when they leave stores. Text history of smart convenience store 
system. In mid 1970s, barcodes and scanning technologies was adopted. It is the most widely used automatic identification and data capture technology worldwide. This technology provides up-to-date sales statistics by item, store, and area, valuable data for pricing settings and promotions, detailed information on the customer's behavior, and even tools for assessing workers' efficiency in the retail business. According to Holmes, this technology may have created the groundwork for the recent surge in numbers of retail establishment. For, uh, from 1980 onward, the first results from Scorpus database is published that retails the employment of technology in grocery retails through the use of barcodes and the numerous benefit screens since its initial introduction in 1974 at the March supermarket. Since then, several technology advances has revolutionized this industry. According to the results, the first technology were primarily focused on product logistics and the applications of ICT in production management system, such as just in time JIT gained strength in 1980s and 1990s. As a result of the volume of data collected by, by undervalued analytical resources were gradually included, fostering collaborative engagement in the grocery retail supply chains and its integrated network that, re that reaches all stakeholders. Next, future trends of smart convenience store system. The smart car is one of the interesting trends of convenience store, which has huge touch screen, lead customers through the store by showing goods from their shopping list and finding where products are located across the stores. Another future advancement that evolving is voice ordering. Color Supermarket, for example, has already been experimenting with a gadget called Hiku, where um, it lets customers to just say what they want and have it uh, delivered right to them. Uh, the Hiku is a Wi-Fi enabled gadget that connects to customers or users' fridge. So now I'm going to explain the services that I've developed for the smart convenience store system. So I've done IoT Core. So, uh, so AVS IoT Core is a cloud service that can connect multiple devices easily and securely interact with other cloud applications and devices. AVS IoT Core can support a large number of devices and messages and can process or route them uh, to AVS endpoints or to other other available and um, securely such as HTTP, WebSockets, and MQTT and secure the message by using authentication or end-to-end -end encryption. These are the two IoT cores that I have developed. Hi, I'm Weijie. I would like to talk about the problem statement and motivation of our smart convenience store system. In this era, most of the convenience stores are using a traditional style, which is to settle the payments manually and identify if there is a lack of product on the shop. So, the storekeeper may waste their time to check the product one by one and lack of awareness when no product on the shop. So, we propose a system that can help the storekeeper to save their time and cost and also can restore the product immediately. So this is the smart convenience store system that we propose. And the mainly function is using the IoT sensor to detect the product and the customer face and then save them into the Dynamo DB. And lastly, it will automatically generate the payment receive and detect there is lack of product and then send the email to the store manager. Good day, everyone. I am Ko Hoi. I would like to discuss an example of the reading in the Internet of Things platform in the market, especially Amazon Web Service IoT platform, Microsoft Azure IoT, and Google IoT. Amazon Web Service is a web-based platform that offers cost-effective cloud computing services. As the leading cloud service provider, it offers a complete list of services for IoT such as Amazon Web Service Green Grass, Amazon Web Service IoT Analytics, and Amazon IoT Core. 
For a moderate serving green grass, it allows service such as under function execution and data syncing to function locally even when the device is offline. Besides that, Google Cloud Internet of Things is one of the well known IoT platforms. It is a private cloud vendor that allows users to access Google computer resources for a fee or a pay per use basis. The Internet of Things services that Google Cloud offers, such as Cloud IoT Core, Big Theory, and Cloud Park Ocean. For big theory, it can analyze data in real time using pre-trained machine learning model, and the result may be visualized for easier understanding using data studio. In addition, there is another leading IoT platform, which is Azure IoT. It is Microsoft Private Cloud Platform that allows users to access and manage cloud services provided by Microsoft. Internet of Things services that Azure offer, for example, Azure IoT Hub, Azure Machine Learning, and Azure IoT Edge. Let's say IoT Hub. It is a managed service hosted in the cloud that acts as a central machine hub for communication in both directions between an Internet of Things application and its attached devices. Next is comparison of features such as IoT platform, compute service, database service, storage service, security service, and others among AWS IoT platform, Microsoft Azure IoT, and Google IoT have been reviewed. For AWS, it's provided AWS IoT Code, Google Cloud provided Cloud IoT Code, and Azure provided IoT Hub. The compute service that AWS provided is Amazon EC2, Amazon Lambda, and Elastic Log Balancing. Google Cloud provides Compute Engine, and Azure provides Platform as a Service, Azure Container Service, and Virtual Machine Computer Engine. AWS provide database services such as Aurora, DynamoDB, and Redshift. Google Cloud provide Cloud SQL and Cloud Data Store. Whereas Azure provide SQL database and CosmoDB. The storage service that AWS produce is simple storage service, Elastic Block Storage, and Elastic File System. Storage service that Google Cloud provider is Cloud Storage, and Azure provider is Cloud Storage and Disk Storage. Their security for AWS is under AWS Connector, Google Cloud is under IAM, and Azure is under Azure Identity Management. Last, for machine learning, AWS has the Deep Learning AMI, Google Cloud has the Cloud Speed API, and Azure has the Connected Service at its machine learning. That's all for my part. Thank you. Good day, everyone. I am Ko Chia Hoi. Now I would like to demo on how to configure Connector service in AWS with React App. After logging into AWS console, we can find Connector under service. The first step is to create user pool under AWS Connector service. Four name is required to create user pool. Second step is to select the required attributes. Third step is to select the required policies. Next step is to select required MSN and verification settings. Then it's the step to configure required message compromiser recommend to choose verification type at least so that verification link will be sent through email. Next step is to create add client. This step is important and add client ID is needed to configure user pool in Visual Studio Code. Also make sure to uncheck the general client secret. Then step seven is to create to create create for button to finish the process. Then user pool is being created successfully. After that, we need to configure domain name with new Amazon Connector as domain. Check for everything in order to successfully create a domain name. Terminal in Visual Studio Code is used to create React app that enable to host a sign up page. This command is to open style for app in Visual Studio Code. This command is to create a Amazon Connector identity. NPM start command line enable to host React app to the internet. The app is then opened in browser. This is the command modified under app.js in order for user to use email and password to sign up to the system. User pool ID and client ID have been copied and pasted from Amazon Connector.
following email and password is used to sign up to the system. The console in the right bottom part shows that email and password are successfully submitted to create user account. Then the verification link is sent to the email to verify the email for user to sign up. The pop-up message shows that the user has successfully registered. We will then see the confirm account status shows that the email has been verified through email link. This shows the further detail of the username created. I'll show you the configuration that I've done for IoT Core. So this is the um, uh, IoT Core tab. So first of all, we have to create things. So let, uh, I've created a few things here. So let me show you. So here is the uh, things that I've created. One is for camera and one is for weight sensor. So here is the details. And now we have to create a certificate. Just after we created the things, it will direct us to create a certificate. So we have to select an automatic uh, uh, option to create to generate a certificate. So during the generation of certificates, we have to download um, public key, private key, a certificate, and also root CA1 file. And then once we created this, we have to create a policy. And I've created a few policy here, but the one uh, that um, I've created for the um, weight sensor is weight policy. And here is the uh, detail of the policy and also the statement that I've added for the policy. And now we can go back to the certificate and have a look of the certificate. So these are the details of the certificate. And in certificate, we have to attach the policy. So here I've attached the weight policy. And also we have, we also have to attach the things. So I've attached the things, which is weight sensor. And now we, it is ready to test. So to test, we have to subscribe to a topic. And to subscribe to a topic first, we have to, um, we have to create a JSON file to, uh, to establish a connection between device and also IoT core with some sample data. So let's have a look on it. So this is the uh, JSON file. Uh, and here we have to include the um, device class and, uh, and also the keys that we have downloaded here. The files are here and these are the keys the parrot key certificates, uh, root CA1, and also the OZ ID that I showed you just now. And then, and then we have, we should, uh, we can insert our data here. And now we can go back to the console and type, type out our topic name, which is weight sensor. So, Weight sensor. Here. Okay. And now we have subscribed to topic. So here we have to establish the connection. To establish a connection, we have to use PowerShell and type out the command node. Node and our JSON file name weight.js. we can see the device are connected and the data has been sent out to our IoT core and now our IoT core able to read the data and here are the data here are the data and that's all from me thank you Hi, from my part, I'm using the AWS Lambda to create function and to save the data into the DynamoDB. First, I go to the IAM, which is Identity and Access Management, to create roles. The roles will have the full access of modified the DynamoDB. So when I create the Lambda functions, I need to give it 
a access to modify the dynamo db and there are three functions that are using aws lambda created which is check in check out and add to cart and after all the function will proceed the dynamo db which is the person table will have the data that's all for my part thank you after creating a thing in AWS IoT Core, Lambda function named Identify Product is created to detect product details from the shelf. In order to create Lambda function, AWS console has services like Lambda. The user required to click Create function in order to create the fun Lambda function. User required to name the function choose the appropriate language for the lambda function and then choose between the instruction set that is uh, suitable for this function code lastly user required to choose the existing execution role for this lambda function and in this case use an existing role is chosen in order to create an existing role user required to use iam service under aws control in order to create role create role button is clicked and lambda is chosen as use case as its execution role for lambda function and then user able to filter suitable policies using the filtering service and after filtering the appropriate roles user required to name their role and then click the create role to finish this process after completing this process the user can choose the existing roles from the various selections and then finish the create function process by clicking create function then under the functions the user able to see the functions that they have successfully created and after clicking the identify product lambda function this is the uh, function code that was used for this function and when the test button is clicked uh, the result shows the product details It shows that it's a type of food and it's a snack. After configuring AWS IoT Core and creating the Lambda function of identified product, the user is required to add AWS IoT Core as a trigger to the Lambda function. In order to do that, the user is required to go under AWS IoT Core service and choose rules. And under the rules, the user is required to click create role button then the user is required to name this role and provide the appropriate description of the role the user is also required to add action to the role and in this case send a message to lambda function is added as the action and proceeded with the user required to insert the name of the lambda function which is the identified product here we can see that the action has been successfully added and under the rule query statement the user is required to type select everything from everything under camera sensor which is the policy name of AWS IoT Core and be able to finish this process by clicking the button create rule. After that when the user goes under the lambda function identified product able to see the AWS IoT is added as a trigger to this lambda function. The user is required to create a dynamic DB table under the AWS services in order to insert the product details. Under the DynamoDB service, the user is required to click create table and under the create table, a user is required to insert the table name and provide the partition key which is the unique key for this table and then proceed 
in creating table by clicking the create table button after successfully creating the table under the product uh, the user able to click create item in order to add items to the table uh, these are the examples of items that have been added to this table which is the product ID number of items under this ID product brand name price type and weight for the configuration of uh, AWS SNS the user is required to choose the SNS service under AWS the user is required to click create topic and choose between the type of service and then name the topic with appropriate name and then finish this process with create topic button the user is also required to create subscriptions and in order to create sub subscription the user is required to choose the topic ARN the protocol type and the endpoint which is in this case I have to provide my email ID and finish the process with create subscription I also have added another protocol which is the SMS protocol and provide my endpoint with uh, my contact number and cre create this subscription here we can see that two type of uh, subscription have successfully added lambda function is created to trigger the sns notification service and uh, lambda function is created under the lambda service of aws console and the user is required to name the function and choose the appropriate settings the user is also required to create an execution role for sns and lambda service is chosen for lambda function the user is required to choose the uh, suitable roles under the create role of IAM services and after choosing the appropriate roles the user is required to name the role and finish the process with create role and here we can see that the roles have been successfully created and when the lambda function is executed the user will be sent with a sns alert notification with a restock alert the restock for items into the shelves the user is also sent with email as restock alert restock food items into the shelves for the configuration of data pipeline the user is required to create an s3 bucket the user is required to enter the name and the name of the bucket should be unique followed by aws region in this case north virginia is given to create data pipeline the user is required to select data pipeline in aws console and under the create pipeline the user is required to enter and select required attributes for example name source source dynamo db table name which is the product output s3 folder the s3 bucket that we have created will be selected and then for the security and access pipeline role and ec2 role have to be created under the iam roles for the creation of execution role we have to go under iam roles of aws two types of roles were created uh, data pipeline role and then ec2 instance role after creating the role and added into the data pipeline we have to click activate in order to create the data pipeline here we can see that data pipeline have been successfully created now the pipeline will be activated and we can export the data from dynamo db table to s3 storage this shows that the uh, process of execution is completed 
after the execution of the exporting data we can check the SK bucket that the data have been successfully exported here we can see that the content of the SK bucket after the completion of exporting the data we also can check the data is being exported under the EC2 instances in AWS console.